All right, I hope you enjoyed part one. This is part two. We'll get to it right now. All right, starting right back in where we left off with question six. It's what is the FCC Part 97 definition of a telecommand? Your choices are going to be A, instruction bulletin issued by the FCC, or B, a one-way radio transmission of measurement at a distance from the measuring instrument, C, a one-way transmission to initiate, modify, or terminate functions of a device at a distance, or D, an instruction from a VEC. Well, again, if we look at 97.3, paragraph 43, we see that a telecommand is a one-way transmission to initiate, modify, or terminate functions of a device at a distance. Well, what could possibly do that? Well, there's one thing right there. You control your television one way at a distance, and it can modify the function, change channel, volume, or terminate it, turn it off. Now, in this case, what they're really wanting you to think about is satellites. In other words, at a distance, you can control the satellite with one-way communication. So that would make, all of that would make our answer C, a one-way transmission to initiate, modify, or terminate functions of a device at a distance. All right, moving on to number seven. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of telemetry? Your choices are going to be an informational bulletin issued by the FCC, a one-way transmission to initiate, modify, or terminate functions of a device at a distance, a one-way transmission of measurement at a distance from the measuring instrument, an informational bulletin from a VEC. Well, again, we're looking at part 97.3, paragraph 45 which is going to tell us it is telemetry, a one-way transmission of measurement at a distance from the measuring instrument. This would be an example of that as a satellite sending measurement to ground stations. And notice it is one-way, not two-way. So that's going to make our answer C, a one-way transmission of measurement at a distance from the measuring instrument. Now, a word of caution here, question number six, and if you want to go back, feel free, and number seven are written very similarly. The, the questions themselves and the answers look very similar. You have to dif differentiate between telemetry and command. Telemetry being distance and command being your uh, giving instructions. All right, question number eight. Which of the following entities recommends transmit receive channels and other parameters for auxiliary and repeater stations? Your choices are going to be frequency spectrum manager, frequency coordinator, FCC regional field office, and international telecommunications union. And again, we see this is referenced in 97.3 paragraph 20 which tells us the frequency coordinator, an entity recognized in a local or regional area by amateur operators whose stations are eligible for auxiliary or repeater stations that recommend transmit receive channels and associated operating and technical parameters for such stations in order to avoid or minimize potential interference. And the purpose of that is to keep this from turning into this. Now, the key here is we're talking local. And this is usually uh, on something like the two meter band, uh, which technician class license holders are uh, able to operate small, low powered uh, units that, that uh, use repeaters. Uh, and if you have a lot of different repeaters in a different area, things can get, get all jumbled up and uh, communications just uh, fall apart. So the question there is, uh, excuse me, the answer there is B, frequency coordinator. 
Okay, let's move to question nine, and that is who selects a frequency coordinator? The options are going to be the FCC Office of the Spectrum Management and Coordination Policy, the local chapter of the Office of the National Council of Independent Frequency Coordinators, amateur operators in a local or regional area where stations are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations, the FCC Regional Field Office. And again here we're uh, <clears throat> pointing to 97.322 and it clearly states by amateur operators. What does that, mean? that means we the people, the operators, those of us who hold licenses get together in our communities, our local areas where uh, you have a ham license and you pick the uh, the coordinator. Not the government, not the FCC, not the Office of the Spectrum Management, but the people. Which means the answer would be amateur operators in a local or regional area whose stations are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations. Moving on to number 10. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of an amateur station? Your answers could be A. Station in an amateur radio service consisting of the apparatus necessary for carrying on radio communications. Okay. Your next one is A. Building where amateur radio receivers, transmitters, and RF power amplifiers are installed. Next is any radio station operated by a non-professional or any radio station for hobby use. Alright, so if we look, we can tell that the uh, referring here to 97.3 paragraph 5, which is amateur station, a station in the in an amateur radio service consisting of the apparatus necessary for carrying on radio communications. Okay, so this is an apparatus. Well, here's an apparatus too. But don't, don't, uh, don't have to worry about just base stations. Apparatuses can be mobile too. Yeah, I can think this guy's not married. I don't see anywhere for his wife to sit. Anyway, so this would make the answer to the question A, a station in an amateur radio service consisting of the apparatuses necessary for carrying on radio communications. Okay, we're going to do uh, straight down to question 11. Which of the following stations transmits signals over the air from a remote receiving site to a repeater for retransmission? Your possible answers are beacon station, relay station, auxiliary station, message forwarding station. And you see we're at uh, 97.3. Paragraph 7, which tells us auxiliary station is an amateur station other than in a message forwarding system that is transmitting communications point to point within a system of cooperating amateur stations. That is a mouthful and it is very ambiguous. <laughs> Let me see if I can try to clarify this. Now, by no means is this a 100% explanation. In this picture, you will see the guy on the little portable is talking to a base station, which is actually a auxiliary station. It is closed. In other words, only the person authorized to use that auxiliary station may do so. 
However, that auxiliary station or base station is transmitting to the repeater and then the repeater broadcasts out to everyone so the little guy up there in the corner in the car can hear it. Now, if the guy in the car was close enough to the base station to transmit to it, he would not be able to unless he was authorized. So, however, the repeater, anyone can transmit to that repeater because it is an open system. Well, I hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Uh, there are some very good websites that uh, go into auxiliary station a uh, little bit more detail, and I will have those uh, posted on the website next to this video. So, the answer to which of the following stations transmits signals over the air from a remote receiving site to a repeater for retransmission is an auxiliary station. Well, that's going to be the end of this video and uh, the end of this section. I hope you got something from that. If re uh, you need to repeat this video, do so as many times as you need to to get the answers done. And I'll just click this little repeat button right here and it'll take you back to the beginning. If you came to this series of videos uh, directly, I kind of recommend that you click over here and go to part one and start from that point forward. If you're ready to move on and learn some more ham, click right here. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.